This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. So uh, my name is Rashmi and uh, I'm part of SIGN team. Uh, I welcome you for all this, uh, all this, all the, this session um, on behalf of SIGN. Um, we have two imminent keynote speakers today, Mr. Milin and uh, Mr. Ramesh. I'll introduce you to them um, as we go along. But uh, before that, uh, we would like to start with the introduction of SIGN. Um, just a few minutes, some of you might be aware about uh, SIGN, but um, uh, to, to, for, the, for them who are not aware, just for benefit of them, we'll start with the SIGN introduction. Uh, we also have two more speakers today. One is Mr. Mayank Agarwal. He's the uh, um, he is from IDEX uh, DIO, and Advait he is our uh, one of the disc winners and a passionate young entrepreneur. Uh, so um, I'll introduce uh, all of them um, after the introduction session of sign. Uh, let me just share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, SIGN stands for Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and it is hosted under the uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, it is uh, fostering the e uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem uh, inside the campus uh, from almost now it's uh, 19 years. Um, it's uh, since its inception in 2004, uh, we, our preference is always been on the intellectual property based startups, hardware startups, and uh, the parameters which we look when we incubate the startup main is economic growth. Apart from that, we also incubate the startups who have some social impact and the strategic uh, value as well. Uh, science journey um, in in a, as a glimpse, 2000 to 2004, we were operating as a pilot. Then 2000 to 2014, we, we incorporated the society and then institutionalization of the incubation activities, then scaling up. And now it is uh, in the expansion phase, we are going to a new building, which is uh, inside the campus uh, where there will be facility expansion and the lab facility, the co-working space, the office space, all the infrastructure facilities and also funding um, expansion will be also there uh, when we, uh, we we are hoping that we'll move uh, in, the, in, the, in the next financial year. Um, so in a nutshell, what we offer, it's a, uh, it's a platter for all the um, entrepreneurs at early stage, even though uh, at, at all their life cycles, uh, at all the stages of their life cycle, uh, infrastructure support like office space, access to labs, then funding in terms of grants, seed fund, again, connections with the VCs, angels, banks. Um, mentoring, in-house mentoring, external mentors, connections with the external mentors. We have some in-house mentors as well. Our internal team is uh, capable enough to mentor the startups. We have some service providers like legal, IP, finance. So those are in our database and we connect as and when uh, the, there is a need. Uh, we also have some international programs with international organizations like in Switzerland, we have AIT program in Canada, Taiwan, we are con well connected with the international ecosystem as well. Uh, we also arrange the uh, demo days for the startups like networking opportunities, investor day, demo day, visibility uh, for the startups. And also we do have some connections with the manufacturing hub for the product development of the star of the, uh, to support the product development of the startup. So in a nutshell, this is what uh, we offer as an incubation. Um, the impact, these are the numbers we have incubated till now 208 startups and 1000 plus entrepreneurs from different programs. Um, when uh, th there's one number which I want to highlight that when sign invests one rupee, in a company, the overall external funding raised by against that one rupee is 188 uh, rupees. So that's the ratio. Uh, Sign has um, some lab facilities. We have a metalworking lab. We have a electronics and prototyping lab. Also, we have bio lab. So these facilities are available for our entrepreneurs. Um, so some of the pictures from the lab. Um, 
under idex as a pi partner incubator what sign offers being in an academic institute um, uh, iit bombay it is a uh, hot spot for deep tech innovations we have our aerospace engineering department some of the centers which are focused on uh, related to the defense um, applications and we also have c mines uh, at iit bombay which is started in 2020 it is a center for machine intelligence and data science um, in inside iit bombay so we have different centers focused faculty members doing deep tech research which is a benefit for our startup uh, they do mentor faculty members we uh, take the sub their support uh, for mentoring our startups we, our uh, faculty members are associated with different organizations like drdo isro nal and defense psus as well um uh, the major strength of academic institute is a talent pool of students so being in iit bombay working with the students as an intern so that there is a huge opportunity for the startups also to get engaged with the student and um, as i mentioned we do have some la uh, laboratories uh, setups but apart from that iit bombay has high end equipments and infrastructure facilities which are also available for sign incubators so this is the biggest strength being in the academic institute um, we we are also connected well connected with the business and technical mentors wherever the startups need the support apart from mentors we have investors also so based on the need we do connect the um, startups with the investors and also we make them ready we do the mock pitching we make them ready for pitching to the investors i am happy to share that two of our uh, um idex startups basically idex companies have raised this fund uh, the funds in the last uh, year we have arranged two demo days for our only for specifically for idex startups and uh, uh, there were a lot of connections and two of them two, uh, two deals were closed uh, with this um, investors uh, connects uh, and there are some in serious uh, progress um we do have partnership industry linkages as i mentioned international network also and the biggest uh, advantage of being in an incubator as a startup is peer to peer learning and alumni support so you have um, people along with you who are in the same phase in the same boat you can help others others can help you so that is the biggest strength of an incubator um sign team uh, team size is 33 currently and a uh, lot of experience uh, uh, people are working in sign life science technology management legal so we have um, uh, different domain expertise inside the um, inside the team and uh, we support our startup as and when it requires there is a need um, so this is all uh, all about sign um, so uh, now i think we should move to the actual uh, keynote address let me just stop sharing yep uh so we'll move to the keynote address now i'll introduce you um with two speakers uh mr milan kulkarni he is the uh, oh. he is the head um group it st telemedia global data centers uh, milan comes hey. with a rich experience of more than 25 years in the industry at various leadership positions currently he is the head as i mentioned earlier he served as a senior vice president vice president in the same organization uh, he has also worked with many mncs like siemens icici bank uh, tata communications kec international limited Milan is an alumni of IIM Ahmedabad and holds a bachelor degree in electrical engineering from Walchand College of Engineering Samali. He has also completed PGEMP postgraduate executive management program in strategy and branding from SPJN Institute Mumbai. Um, welcome Milan to this session and thanks for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, taking out uh, time for, from your busy schedule. Thank you so much. Welcome. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have uh, next speaker as uh, Mr. Ramesh Chaudhary. He is an IT professional with 16 plus years of experience in IT um, service delivery, IT network and security design, uh, driving cyber security initiatives, application or operations and excellence, risk management, impact analysis, and resource people management. Uh, he is the head IT operations at ST Telemedia GDC India. 
and he drives the service delivery and cyber security initiatives at the organization. He has done his MBA in marketing and holds a bachelor degree in electrical electronics and communications engineering. Welcome Rameshji to this session. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Ashmin. Welcome. Yeah, so uh, now I hand over to Milin and... Uh, Thank you, thank you. Thank you and, and sorry for maybe being late, little late. But oh, I'm no. taking it from here too, so pardon me if I'm feeling a little sleepy, but I'll try to keep me awake <laughs> as much as possible. Thanks, thanks for giving the opportunity first. It's always good to connect with SIGN and, and with uh, esteem organization like IIT and SIGN because we also learn a lot. And that is a journey which helps us to keep ourselves motivated. Thanks for that opportunity. I think I'll, I'll share more insights around first thing is what is important, not only from technology dimensions where people will be interested in knowing cyber security and technical dimension, but taking a step back about how we should approach uh, uh, overall cyber security journey. And, and then I'll also spend some more time about talking about a few of the technologies and how we can implement that. And Ramesh will be able to share some more details uh, further around how it is implemented, how it is handled and all those stuff. I think first thing first, if I look at typically when we start the journey, we should look at uh, start looking at outside in perspective. And when we talk about outside in perspective, it is very important to understand the global dynamics, what is happening, geopolitical situations. When we talk about how different countries are, are working closely, not closely, what is happening in the geopolitical world, how it is also correlated with cyber security and how we can uh, get influence or sometimes how we should influence and how should drive various activities. So while we feel that it is simple, but it is very important to understand uh, when we start looking at and coming down around which are the areas which we need to work upon. The second important thing in cyber security world is also is what are the power centers. And when we say power centers, I'm not thinking from technology dimension perspective. Again, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking from global perspective, which countries are power centers. And it's, it's not that uh, power centers are economic power centers, but mainly countries who are uh, power centers in technology areas who are uh, more deep into cyber tech world or who are ethical hackers and who have got that competencies and skills to take it forward in the long run perspective. So we need to also understand those dynamics and keep following what is happening in those countries and in those areas globally. And the third important and if, uh, thing we should look for is what are the key uh, business powerhouses globally. So that also important areas to look over in that particular geographies have got BFSI, BFSI dominance, particular industries may have particular countries may have automotive automotive kind of industries dominance particular industries may have uh, it kind of dominance so we need to also be cognizant about how we are going to approach what we are going to approach and and uh, and and reading about those things and identifying what we want to look into is very important when we are into a startup setup and this also applies to corporates anyway because corporates we do a lot of uh, this kind of deep dive from a strategy perspective but also important for startups to think through that when they start looking at which are the niche areas to focus upon so one is this is a global dynamics which we should play the second important thing is inter industry specialization and when we talk about industry specialization we have to look for what different types of industries are uh, uh, prominent into cyber security areas what industries are and uh, because every industry is a different maturity level and which industry is at what what maturity level and how we can how we can uh, map them in our ecosystem and our thought process is very important the the next important thing in industry also is, is the customer base that what ultimately customer base we are serving and how uh, cyber security plays a role are we into b2c industry more is my specialization i want to do it in b2c industry more or, or i'd like to do b2b industry more or i would like to spend time in different hybrid and those kind of models so i think we need to also understand what are the what are the kind of customer base we have to whom we are going to address and solve for the next important thing is the service providers. The way we are looking at more, uh, it's not only cyber security is not only related to IT, it's also related to OT. And when I see OT, it is operational technologies mainly, and it changes from industry to industry. If I talk about banking, maybe digital and IT plays a major, plays a major role. But if I talk about power generation, the control mechanism, control systems, and those things also play an equally important role. May not be the digital aspect of that, but it is a how your OT aspect is taken care of is different. If I talk about defense industry, maybe how we are talking about drones, how we are talking about communication protocols to manage them, how we are talking about other controlling protocols to manage them. So those becomes the areas to look at from industry perspective healthcare again comes with a different dynamics from a cyber security perspective and and uh, retail industry is picking up again from a size and competency perspective so i think we need to also look at industry view 
how this uh, is having a different different uh, focus area to look upon and then think about what is my areas where i would like to focus as a company or or as an individual or as a firm where where we are thinking of from startup perspective the next important thing is to look for competition and uh, while I'm, I'm maybe you may be thinking i'm, I'm applying corporate world uh, to a startups but as a startup we also need to very uh, important to understand is what is the competition around in my area sometimes i I've, I've seen when we evaluate the various startups and from applications and those perspectives we look at what is new what is different what is niche uh, in this uh, uh, technological dimensions when somebody is presenting because how it is difficult to uh, create the entry barriers how difficult it is for somebody else to uh, think through and, and replicate it and is that somebody else is, is also ahead of us when we are coming out with this kind of uh, technical solution so that that is where we have to also understand the competition uh, dimension and when we under when we are discussing about from a competitiveness perspective you have to also understand not only from past or present we need to understand from a futuristic perspective that what is the futuristic uh, areas which we need to focus upon and how uh, is that somebody else is, is also racing ahead sometimes because from mid term long term perspective the organization's uh, uh, success financials benefits also revolve around that and i think that is an important dimension we should look for when we are evaluating outside in perspective and then obviously we look at the technology dimension and, and technology dimension I, i'll say it is it is there is no end because every every uh, and we earlier we used to say that uh, maybe it will take 2 3 years to change uh, at the application level or at at at, at some other areas but the way we are say, seeing the change now it is very fast even 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 3 months is a good horizon to look at and what that means for us as a startup uh, uh, community or or uh, corporates also is that to keep looking at what is new happening in this area and uh, technology dimension areas and and to name few as we know we are talking about quantum communication we are talking about quantum computing which is a dark stage of early stage of of uh, analysis but that will contribute well it comes to cyber security obviously uh, artificial intelligence blockchain the data uh, data analytics and cloud kind of thing they're talking about mobility applications web web based and those things so i think while we do that we should also have a technology dimension to think through and once we put all these dimensions together and, and stepping it back it could be corporate strategic team who is doing it or me as the individual entrepreneur doing it i think this global dynamics dimension industry dimension uh, competitive dimension and the technology dimension plays a very significant role and once we put all these four blocks together and then we start thinking about what i would like to do as an organization as a startup and to look forward to and and if i elaborate further on that and i'll take maybe two industries where where we can uh, go little deeper if i talk about uh, and which industry i i also belong to data center and, and and industry while we know that it is is information technology side from cyber security side is well matured but when it comes to operation technology we look for building management systems electrical automation systems the plcs and controllers iot's and other devices how the connectivities are happening how data transfer is happening how data is stored is it encrypted not encrypted so all those things are varying from it to ot and when i talk about ot if i talk about building management system there are six different players who are doing it how they are doing their plc uh, version management controls patch management firmware level details do we have discovery tools around that to even take care of those kind of information and do it so this becomes a different area when we talk about from data center uh, dynamics perspective but if i go back to banking that the, the dynamics changes because here look here you are looking at what kind of mobility solutions i am putting in place how that mobility is tightly integrated through api or other layer with rest of my organization applications how my core banking systems are are very uh, strong and robust so that uh, information is is uh, not going outside the organization and data loss protection and data storage is doing done properly so the dynamics of industry changes and 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 if i add maybe from a defense perspective if you're looking at drone technologies how important it is that what kind of uh, uh, sensors and iot devices you are fixing on the drone or cameras you are fixing on the drone what kind of even firmware which you are put into those cameras and 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 this thing what is the even the evolution of those technologies as we go along and how easy it is for at that level to go and hacking it uh, uh, and explore it for hacking 
the second aspect especially in, in uh, drone and those things is the communication and network aspect which is which is very important because sometimes what we have seen is that wi-fi networks incorporates or or the communication networks which are open it's very sometimes easy 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 to hack it but is that is that really helping or it's not helping uh, how good we should uh, get into the details of that is very important and when we do those detailing part then we also can figure out what is my uh, niche area which i would like to play with and and if we know that a particular industry is not growing the the way uh, the way we are trying to grow the organization then obviously as a small entrepreneur or the start, a small startup we need to also think through that what kind of technologies we would like to review it what kind of technologies we like to play with what kind of skill sets and competency we have and we need to make it happen i think those are or those are the blocks which start uh, going deeper when you start moving from it to it and typically it to ot and when we talk about it obviously we talk about even starting with a desktop level security even somebody will talk about how we should uh, company should not use the usb for data transfer uh, you should lock the usb you should talk about in, then encryption of data can we store the data in cloud with the storage with encryption how the data transmission will happen between on site and off share offshore kind of scenarios how access management will be handled how there will be a, a, a control mechanism which will be put in place between it and ot and how those overlaps will happen and then on top of that how you can talk about the security operation center and those kind of tools which are not ma not matured for ot industry yet but uh, it industry is more matured so how we can take the feed from ot and put into soc uh, cyber security operation centers and and take it to the next level so i think that is a journey and that's the evolution what what i have uh, seen uh, over the period of time and and uh, i think i think uh, all these things obviously while we talk a lot about uh, all of these dimensions sometimes we have to be also Uh, careful and smart about uh, which areas to focus on because you cannot spread across in all the industries in all the areas. So where the niche spot niche areas are, where we would like to work upon, where 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 we can uh, spend and grow faster. I think as a startup, uh, that that thought process will be equally important. And, and maybe uh, if I further drill down from a process dimension perspective, all all of you are very. uh maybe familiar but we have to obviously look for uh, how we are managing access management how, do, how we are managing data loss protection and data storage how we are managing data transfer and data on cloud how we are managing soc tools from then obviously we look for vulnerability assessment testing penetration testing do we have automated tools available for that do we have uh, uh, application uh, cyber security testing done properly can we also look at uh, mobile and web based uh, tools which can help us to even validate the application Uh, securities properly and i think i think while we do all of these things uh, how 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 well we can handle that between it and ot becomes a very critical um, thought to look at i think i think i will leave at that stage where we should reflect back and figure out what is the areas which you need to work upon then choose what are the technologies we can play as as a competency what we have then look for what more and what different we can develop because knowing the lot of things there people are looking at open source support open source product open source tools but it comes with its own pros and cons so we have to be very careful about what we should do and how we what we should not do and i think i think the one of the key factor i felt from this initial is also we are looking at self sustaining ourselves and i think we have to also look start uh, we have to look from a larger perspective that how we can contribute in building the uh, securing our country uh, better and i think i could see some of the uh, competitive uh, areas which have been mentioned that it is good to see that the intent there is something available in the in the market or something available in the shelf to use it of the shelf kind of products use it use it but here the intention is to see how can we develop something new in a different way in an agile way in a speedy way and and with a secured way so that we we will be more self sustained and and reliability on other oems uh, and this thing will be lesser i think that is a good intent what i felt after going through the documentation and i think with those things we should also move forward, move forward and take this opportunity to uh, uh, jump into it and see what best we could contribute i think i think that these are some of the quick points from my side i'll i'll hand it over to ramesh to talk about more from a technology dimension or some bit of of maybe cyber security architectural views technology dimension views and other things ramesh so over to you Uh, thanks, Milan. Thanks. Uh, you have broadly covered all the landscape of technology industry. Um, what are the key trends in the technology dimension from the cybersecurity dimension? Just to add upon that, I think very important points are covered. Okay, uh, from technology point of view, I think cloud 
has played a significant role okay cloud iot uh, internet connectivity communication which is we are into 4g and 5g world okay and uh, we are more into a connected world and it is it is helping uh, it is helping the not just the industry it is helping the marginal the marginalized people in the country uh, the indian government has played a ver various initiatives like upi based technology aadhar technology uh, but this technology is helping to connect the people to uh, to remove the bottlenecks but this technology is also been exploited by the threat actors and uh, it is very important that it has to be protected and the entire program is focusing on uh, the initiatives where how to protect uh, or secure the digital world okay there are various aspects around that while milan mentioned like bfsi or it landscape is more mature but since it has been more mature but it has been more targeted more sophisticated kind of attacks are happening uh, so the trends are like from certain which is our government body of uh, cyber response team wherein 11.5 million uh, uh, attacks are happening continuously in a, uh, and it is increased i'm just incremental number i'm highlighting and this target this target this is targeted to critical infrastructures like um, railways power and uh, medical uh, or hospitalized in industries banking industries okay and which which can be which can cripple the economy okay which can affect uh, the uh, people okay from that perspective the startups has to think that how this technology uh, can be taken into consideration to protect uh, the uh, country to protect the organization to protect the people from various type of attacks uh, just to focus uh, like what are the trends uh, which are happening in cyber security uh, typically the earlier trends were like people were just it was a data center where all the applications were there but today it's not a case we are connected world our our information is hosted inside the company or in the cloud or in the hybrid environment okay and uh, this information helps while cloud has significantly helped to scale uh, the uh, the scale the requirements of the organization you can see this, this is the best example well how the technology has played a role in covid okay Uh, the technology played uh, uh, the role uh, during uh, the various uh, areas or uh, various areas. Now the AI is playing a significant role. Okay, typically how to how to tackle this problem? Okay, uh, you have to tackle this problem lo looking at the approach. Typically, it, uh, uh, today organizations are designing their cyber security architecture, looking at the attack based approach. How the threat vectors are been used to attack the organization and most of the uh, topics which are covered as part of this uh, incubation program is various aspect of that uh, attack dimensions okay uh, like the reconnaissance which is the entry point okay weaponization how the tools are been used to attack okay how to identify the vulnerabilities how the delivery mechanism happens you must have heard about phishing spoofing and uh, various other ways to deliver the malicious code in the environment how to protect that how to identify that how uh, how to restrict that okay then the exploitation there are a lot of uh, technologies which are still been used which are legacy technologies okay but it is required because it is cheaper there is uh, there is no alternate options okay so how to protect that there are various other way, uh, inst how the code is been executed okay the, so there are some environment like legacy setups which are used in defense which are used in government uh, environment which are used in various um, social uh, causes or social environment okay so this uh, this each attack phases has to be identified as part of uh, identifying the solution approach okay and if if you figure out there are a lot of solutions which are which are there but those are not cost effective for mass adoptions okay so each um, so as as a as a input to the startups they have to think which is the best way which is the best way or uh, think out of the box while identifying the solution okay different approach all together to identify a solution uh just and uh, apart from that uh, there are uh, the trends which are happening is like 
state uh, state actors which are playing a role to deface the country by taking over the website how to identify the address to continuously monitor there are tools available to continuously monitor build a ecosystem cheaper sim sim or cheaper extended detection and response systems which collates various sources of data from your uh, domain authentication from your network security from your um, uh, from your iot systems and to correlate and identify the the threat or the malicious anomalies which are happening so the point here is how to identify uh, the malicious activities in each kill chain and that is where the application of mind uh, the application of thought process application of approach will play into picture uh, overall i think the programs uh, address various aspects uh, there are 28 our uh, 28 program uh, 28 um, challenges are there and i i i uh, i heartily congratulate every participant to put their best effort to provide the solution uh, which will definitely help not just this particular sector but at the national interest also and overall uh, it's it's a it's a brain which is which is which is helping helped by the ai technology and i i'm sure people are already using chat gpt which is uh, which is a product which is a product which has been which is a highly adapted product within two or three months it has it has break, broken all the records and we expect these startups to come up with such kind of technology which can be adopted at the mass level and at this stage i, I think I'll, I'll pause myself and uh, give uh, the baton to rashmi to take over thanks for giving me this opportunity thank you so much thank you thank you Melinda, and thank you ramesh thank you so much for the more for the insights um so uh Milind, you will be stay, staying back or uh, we can take the questions take the questions and I'll be here totally. You can get it. You'll be there. You can get it with your yeah, video. Okay. 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 So, okay. Um, then um, now I think uh, I'll invite Mayank and uh, he will share some insights about the actual problem statements and about IDEX, how it works. Um, I said just to introduce, uh, I want to introduce Mayank. Mayank is currently the program executive at uh, IDEX PIO. Uh, and member secretary uh, Def Space uh, advisory team in Ministry of Defense. At IDEX, he works pr primarily with in the space and Navy teams. He graduated in 2018 from Purdue University uh, with a Master of Science in Aeronautics and Astronautics, uh, focusing on astronautics uh, and uh, systems engineering. He has done his B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from Delhi Technological University in 2016. Over to you, Maya. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, the introduction and uh, good evening to all. Uh, I also thank the two keynote speakers for their uh, talks and they were very enlightening. So I'll just share my screen and start uh, presenting the PPT. Mm. Uh, I, ho I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Okay. So IDEX is basically a scheme that was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister in 2018 during the Defense Expo. It is managed by defense innovation organizations under the aegis of the Department of Defense Production in the Ministry of Defense. So we aim to create an ecosystem to foster innovation and technology development in the fields of defense and aerospace. And we work primarily with startups, MSMEs, and individual innovators, academia institutes. Uh, we basically do this by launching a set of problem statements within our two schemes known as DISC and PRIME. So DISC is Defense India Startup Challenge and uh, the maximum grant amount that we give in DISC is to the tune of rupees 1.5 CR, 1.5 crore. And the maximum grant amount that we give in PRIME is rupees 10 crores. So this is the major uh, scheme. These are the two major schemes of IDEX. Uh, we uh, basically work with the, our nodal agencies that I'll come to at a later stage. Uh, and we have our partner incubators with us and we, I'll also talk about that later. Uh, let's see, so like I said, we work in DISC. We, we have the DISC scheme and the prime scheme, DISC in which the maximum grant amount is 1.5 CR and 10 CR. Uh, another a critical component of all our IDEX grants is the matching contribution part, wherein the startups that are winning the projects have to bring in an equivalent amount 
in terms of cash, in kind or past expenditure as a part of their skin in the game in this project. So if you want or if you demand a grant of 1.5 crore from us, you have to bring an equivalent amount at least. So 1.5 crore from your end. Uh, applications you apply on our website and I'll uh, discuss the application process at a later stage. And uh, let's see, so IDEX footprint. We have organized more than 200 workshops and 100 plus networking meetings all across the nation. We have participated in all the Defense Expos, Aero India, and all the other Ministry of Defense initiatives and other Government of India uh, events that are organized. We are connected right now with more than 7,000 innovators. We've received more than 7,000 uh, applications. Till date, we have launched uh, eight editions of nine editions of this, actually. This is the ninth edition uh, on cybersecurity. Uh, we have, uh, we are in the process of concluding the seventh edition of Open Challenge. Till date, we have 350 plus winners that are actively working with us. Uh, we have 20 plus nodal agencies. So nodal agencies are basically the end users of our uh, products. So when an IDEX uh, startup develops a product, uh, the challenge usually comes from the nodal agency, which has complete ownership. In the spirit of co-creation and co-development, these nodal agencies or the end users are involved throughout the IDEX challenge process, throughout the product development process. And we, our nodal agencies are our three tri services, Army, Air Force, Navy, the 16 DPSUs, uh, Ministry of Home Affairs that we have been working with, Indian Coast Guard, Mighty also, and other organizations in the national security uh, framework of India. Uh, we've recently launched at Aero India only in 2023, the IDEX Investor Hub, IIH, which has a pledge amount of more than 200 crores at the moment. And some startups have already started raising uh, funds from these investors. Also, the call to apply for IH is open, I think, at the moment. Uh, let's see. So how do we work? So we, uh, so this is the process of working for DISC and time challenges that I'm going to explain at the moment. Uh, we receive problem statements that are curated from the services and DPSUs. These are then uh, basically analyzed maybe at our end or even by the services themselves. And they give us a set of problem statements with some description, with some requirements, which we float on our website. These are uh, launched at, uh, you know, uh, various events, maybe DEF Expo, Aero India or some other event like DEF Connect. And there's a particular last date for you to apply on our website. Uh, we accept ap applications only on our website. These are launched as part of DISC or Prime. So you'll know which challenge has what grant amount available with it. Uh, following the app last date of the applications, uh, we basically then uh, send these applications to the end users who then go through your pitch deck, who go through your proposal, who go through all the documents you've submitted. And on the basis of that, they shortlist a uh, certain number of uh, uh, applicants for the next round, which is the meeting of the High Powered Selection Committee, HPSC, uh, which is chaired by a high ranking officer of the end user agency. Uh, and it has multiple other members from uh, government agencies, industry, academia, partner incubators, and a presentation round is conducted uh, on the basis of the scoring received, the final winners are uh, selected and we proceed towards contract signing with those winners. So advantages of IDEX is that we have a pan-India outreach and a strong PI network support system. Uh, our portal is very easy to access. It's completely paperless. You get the grant directly within a couple of days of completion of the portal uh, of formalities. Uh, IP rights, this is very important for all the startups and uh, IP rights remain with the innovator 100%. We don't have any claim on any IP with you. Uh, we help you with the commercialization, we help you with the procurement with the uh, agencies, with the end users. Once the product is completely developed and it has undergone successful trials, uh, we help you with the procurement at the end user agency. And we also help try to help you with the procurement outside of IDEX. So there are events wherein, uh, you know, you have the uh, maybe the Naval Chief of Australia or Naval Chief of UK or Naval Chief of other, or uh, Army Chief of some other nation who's visiting and we uh, organize an exhibition for them of ITEX products so they can, you know, show their interest, they can understand the technologies and uh, they can then take it forward with you. So, like I said, these are our partner incubators. We have 19 partner incubators at the moment spread all across the country and uh, Sign is one of our uh, oldest and I must say one of the most hardworking partner incubators that we have. Uh, in the Open Challenge, we've received 1,000 plus applications. Open Challenge is another platform on our ITEX uh, portal, 
where the startups themselves can upload a technology that they feel the defense services have a need of, but haven't thought of at the moment. So let us assume you've developed something and you want to pitch it to the defense in the industry. You put it on the IDEX open platform and we'll send it to all our nodal agencies, associated nodal agencies. If they find merit in it, they'll, uh, they'll let us know and we'll contact you. The rest of the process then remains the same. Basically a meeting of the HPSC and then proceeding towards contract signing. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, how you basically go to our website and apply. So once you go to itex.gov.in, and you go to IDEX challenges. This is the screen that you're going to see. Uh, right now we are at disk nine, which is this cyber security focused. We have 20 problem statements from our uh, nodal agencies, from our services, three, three services, DPSUs and Ministry of uh, Home Affairs, uh, the I4C division of Ministry of Home Affairs. Uh, these problem statements are all from disk. So maximum grant amount is 1.5 CR in these problem statements. And uh, you can go through these problem statements here. You have, can see the challenge description of these problem statements also from here. Uh, this is the second initiative that IDEX has undertaken wherein we've basically focused on a critical deep tech technology, which has a huge relevance in today's national security framework of the nation. So the previous one was Mission Dev Space, which was Disk 8 and IDEX Prime Space. So once you go in, once you click on Disk 9, this is what you're going to see, individual challenges. You can also see the PDF document with all the challenge description. This is the application form that I'm showing you. Uh, you can uh, basically see it's, it's not a very difficult form. It's a very easy actually form to apply. Uh, let me go here. Yeah. Uh, so you just uh, select the challenge, whichever one you apply for. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, you have to submit your pitch deck. You have to submit your proposal. The format of submission, what is to be included is already on our website and you can go there directly and you can uh, see everything that is available there. Uh, thank you all. And I'll just play the video. Uh, I'll ask uh, Rashmi ma'am if you can play the video of this line launch. Okay. Do we have uh, yes, video on us? Yeah. Or, yes, yes, fine. You can do it from our side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you ma'am. I think you may unshare your screen. Yeah, um, stop share. Thank you. Launched by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in 2018, IDEX. A pioneer in innovating and developing cutting edge technologies for armed forces in land. See and sky. IDEX has built a strong innovation ecosystem in the defense sector. It is now expanding its ambit to tackle national security in the critical domains of space and cyber. With the new age of digitization, cyber security threats and challenges are not limited to the digital world, but have become a matter of national security. To mitigate the security risks and develop next-gen technologies, IDEX is launching cyber security themed Disk 9 with the aim to ensure confidentiality and integrity of data in systems. These challenges span over a wide range of advanced technology domains. Indian Army with three challenges. Indian Navy with three challenges. Indian Air Force with seven challenges. Bharat Electronics Limited with three challenges. Mithani with two challenges. GRSE MDL BEML with one challenge each. Further strengthening the IDEX initiative, the Ministry of Home Affairs has also brought seven challenges through the Indian Cybercrime Coordination Center. IDEX extends an open invitation to innovators, startups and MSMEs to build a secure and resilient cyberspace for the nation. For more details, visit idex.gov.in.
Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, ma'am, for that. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'll just say that the last date to apply is the 24th of March uh, till 5 p.m. So please get your applications in. And uh, if there are any questions or queries, I'm more than happy to take them. So, uh, Mayang, what I suggest is that we'll have the last session and then we'll take Q&A. So, for everyone, all the Q&As will uh, be in. Is that okay? Okay. So, meanwhile, I'll ask the audience if they have any questions, they post on the Q&A box and then uh, we'll uh, address all of them at the end. So, uh, thank you. Thanks, Mayang, for all those insights. And uh, now we will go to Advait. Um, hi, Advait. Good evening, ma'am. Good, yeah, evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening. So now we heard about like where to apply, what will be the, what are the challenges, then uh, what is it that uh, for the innovators. Now we want to hear from you how to apply. So that is the, so you are as a being the IDEX winner, you have gone through that entire process. So your first hand experience will help the potential applicants. Uh, so before you start, I'll just introduce you to the um, audience. So Advait Kulkarni, he is a young and passionate entrepreneur and founder of uh, Vasundhara Geotech. Um, of course, he will talk about his company in his uh, speak and as he speak. And um, Advait holds bachelor's degree in aerospace avionics from QUT Brisbane and master's in space technology applications from Beijing. Uh, Vasundhara for the last two years has also been working with the defense ecosystem and generating solutions that can ease operational load on the armed forces while improving efficiency with the application of AI in critical uh, areas of application. Um, Advait is the winner of DIS 7, uh, right? So DIS yes, 7 high tech challenges. Yeah. Over to you, Advait. Right. Uh... First of all, thank you so much, Rashmi, ma'am. Thank you, Sain, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, there have been like amazing three speakers before me. So I'll just uh, be very pointed in talking of how to go about uh, and, and what have been our experiences. Just as a short intro, uh, Vasundra has been primarily involved in geospatial technologies and Earth observation for the past six years. That has been our main aim and main focus, where we focus entirely on uh, automating image interpretation techniques. So satellite images and their interpretation is what we are aiming to automate as much as possible. And with that, uh, as ma'am said, with that, we have been working with the Indian Army for the past two years uh, with their intelligence problem statements. And with DISC-7, we have started working with the Indian Navy for uh, one of their problem statements on board submarines. Um, I think with that, uh, we'll just I'll just focus on what uh, and how we went about uh, first of all, writing the proposal, uh, uh, Mayank Ji very uh, articulately gave you the entire process of the thing, and uh, let me uh, let me reiterate that process actually is very simple. It's very straightforward. If you really follow the the method that they have given, and it, it's not really of much of a hassle. You have to stick to the formats and stick to the timelines. That is very important. Uh, having said that. One of the most important things that you know really, really helped us was to completely understand the problem statement as much as possible, uh, get in touch with uh, as much as stakeholders if possible uh, beforehand, before you write our application, before you complete our application. Talk to a lot of people. There is a lot of time from now till uh, the end of you know, application deadlines. Uh, 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 my suggestion would be to just to use this entire time. Don't be in a hurry or a haste uh, to put up your application. Use this entire time to talk to as many people as you can. Of course, most of you are going to be uh, experts in your own domain, but it is very uh, apt to talk to the user from their perspective because some definitions or some statements that are written in the problem statement, although uh, I must say that the problem statements that are written at this stage are not much in detail. So just the lines that have been written, your understanding and reflecting your understanding in the proposal is the primary key for getting uh, the user attention uh, towards your proposal. So uh, the one thing that, you know, as I said, you know, to understand what is being written and to understand what is the key requirement from the user, try and talk to as many people as you can. And, and and most importantly, uh, at this stage, when you're writing this proposal, keep in mind that this is a very draft sort of a proposal. The proposal, by the time it becomes the contract, by the time it becomes the agreement, and by the time uh, 
you know you and the user have defined the actual deliverables will change i mean it, it will go through a lot of iteration and it will go through a lot of changes so at this point uh, be very uh, open about showing your understanding so showing your understanding is primary uh, objective of writing your proposal so the better understanding you show during the proposal the quicker attention you will get from the user that has been something that you know um, has been our experience in disk 7 as well as in disk 8 although disk 8 the hp is still to happen um, if it has i don't know but it it is to happen but uh, so uh, while you give your proposal as well the moment you show the understanding of the problem statement uh, be also sure that you have to plan your timelines and your funding accordingly right again uh, till the time this proposal becomes a contract a lot of changes will happen and believe me especially when it comes to timeline and the cost budgets a lot of changes do happen by the time you actually sign the final contract having said that let me also tell you even after uh, signing the contract uh, a lot of people will again help you uh, in this but there is quite a bit of room for changes as well so at this point, based on your best understanding of the problem statement, uh, plan out your activities down to the week. Uh, this is something that helped us quite a bit. Uh, just at an understanding level, we gave them, uh, we gave the user an 11th month, so approximately 44 week timeline in our presentation itself. Uh, and although it is draft, it gives a, a full perspective to the user that within the stipulated amount of time, these guys, this group of guys will be able to pull it off, right? Um, similar thing goes for the budget as well. Be very, very extremely realistic of what is going to be your requirement, what is going to be uh, your deployment of the fund and how is uh, your cycle going to be uh, moving while you are developing all these things. Now, I'm sure most of you are business owners. I'm sure most of you are have been very, very innovative on how you run your businesses. And I don't really need to tell you this, but please make sure that you have enough amount of buffers, you have enough amount of play area, and you have enough amount of uh, area which you can sort of adapt uh, as things change. Uh, Again, I'm sure there's a lot of you who have already worked with the defense forces. You've worked with the uh, with the government ecosystem. But for those who of you who have not, uh, be ready for delays and be ready for uh, changes that happen at the last moment. So for absorbing those changes, make sure that you have designed enough shock absorbing mechanisms in your entire pipeline, in your entire plans, in your entire budget. Um, Keep in mind that disk is not a very uh, long uh, challenge. It is typically, the problem statements also have been typically made so that they're short enough that can be achieved within a year. Um, so give an aggressive 12 month maximum timeline and be very realistic about it as well. Uh, this would go, uh, this would uh, go a long way for you to be a very strong contender to be considered during the HPSC. And during the HPSC, uh, the high uh, you know, the selection committee meeting, uh, the presentation that you have to do, there is a very high ranking officer sitting in, the, in front of you who's chairing the, the committee. And then there are officers who have actually written this problem statement. During that, you, you're not going to get a lot of time. If it's generally three to five minutes at max, uh, make sure that you hit the most important three slides you hit your understanding slide like what you exactly understood from the written problem statement what is your timeline and what is the fund that you are uh, how how you're going to uh, use it how you're going to uh, you know deploy your funds please understand that the timelines that you write and the funds that you uh, allocate uh, go very hand in hand this is a very value based uh, turnaround sort of a process. So your cash flow, you need to manage your cash flow along with the timelines. I mean, you can't have a longer period of time between the two milestones and have cash dry, you know, dry up in, in the middle. Although this will come later, but this is something that you really need to start thinking right at the proposal level. The better you are prepared with the timeline, the better you are prepared with the cash flow and the fund allocation, uh, 
will show the user that you are really well aware and you understand the problem statement to a very deep level where you can plan your next 44 weeks, uh, approximately 48 weeks uh, of activity. Mm. This I think is uh, pretty much it during your uh, proposal stage. Of course, there's a lot of different um, challenges and tips and tricks when it comes to going towards, uh, like from your selection as winners, to going towards uh, you signing the contract, but I don't think I'm the best person to talk about it. Uh, Rashmi Ma'am is here, and and the sign, uh, it, you know, ecosystem will better guide all of you uh, at that point. Uh, there's there's a lot of tricks that you really need to be aware of. Tricks in the sense, uh, it's not about tricking the system, but it is really about managing the timeline and the fund allocation and the deliverables. So these three most important components uh, is something that you need to play around with and adjust everything so that you have enough uh, margin to adapt, as well as you give a credible product to the ecosystem. At the end of the day, I think IDEX and this entire uh, thing has been developed in such a way that there is productization of ideas and it's just not ideas as uh, science projects that we see regularly. So moving towards uh, more productization is what is expected in this program. Uh, and that is why there is these three, uh, the deliverables, the cash flow, and the timelines that you really need to take care after you become winners and you go to the signing the contract. But uh, just to summarize, uh, in your proposal stage, show your understanding, show your deepest understanding of the problem, uh, plan as much as possible with respect to your uh, timelines and your deliverables and plan as much as possible, as much as possible about your cash flow and your fund allocation. I think if you manage these three things and the deeper you do these three things, uh, you have the better chance you have of getting the attention of the end user. So I think that would be my two cents, three cents. Thanks, thanks, um, Advait. Uh, just one more um, uh, question or question. Uh, I mean, um, insight from you we need is that, uh, as you mentioned, for the proposal writing, similarly for the HPSC presentation, do you want to give some suggestions to clear the first round and go for the HPSC? So what is it that uh, you should cover in 10, 15 minutes because there are only 15 minutes for the presentation and Q&A? So how should you handle that HPSC? That will also be helpful for the... Right, ma'am. Uh, I think I, uh, it, it is very important to know that on paper and on by design, the HPSC meeting is designed to be 15 minutes per applicant. But at the end, it just boils down to really five minutes because uh, like what happened with DISC-7, there are so many presentations going on. And at the end of the day, the officers or the panel that is sitting there, they are humans and they need to take so much amount of content. So uh if for everybody who is so this is the first time uh, activity please keep in mind that even if the presentation is designed for 15 minutes keep it down to five keep it absolutely down to five minutes and that includes your q a right so just hit on the most and and this is something that uh, when i was presenting uh, during my hpsc when uh, the, the meeting i started going through my my introduction slide my company slide and the gentleman officer was sitting in front of me said, uh, Advait, we know everything about you. That is why you're here. Go to come to the point. So like, please be aware for everybody who is going to be going to the next stage. Uh, these, these people, they've put in a lot of hard work and they know each of the profiles much in detail. So don't waste your time introducing yourselves. They know you by your, by your first name. They know you by your father's name, your parents' name. So don't go into that. Uh, so just move to the point. And as I said, three most important slides. If you if you can concise it in one slide, best. There's there's nothing like it. But if you want to keep it three slides, first slide is how well you understand their problem statement. How well you, are you able to speak their language? And how well are you, from a technology perspective, how well are you able to capture what the user actually needs? So uh, from a technology perspective, you might be doing something else, but the user requirements are absolutely different. Uh, just as an example, uh, if, I, if I talk about my uh, application, to begin with, ours was just a software project. Ours was something to do with only developing the AI pipeline for detection of different, de detection and classification of different ships as seen by the periscope of a submarine. So 
to begin with during my uh, you know my solution building for me it was just a hard a software problem but the deeper we started me and my co-founder the deeper we started looking at it and the deeper we started talking to people the deep, the more we started understanding uh, how this would work we suddenly realized that there is a hardware component and there's not going to be any computational uh, system that would be available on submarines we would have to provide our own hardware which would do the computation so we made sure that we used those details right in the proposal stage itself uh, another most important thing that we did during the proposal stage is that this is a ai classification project right so for everybody who knows it uh, deep learning uh, typically deep learning our classification and detection uh, pipelines do require a large amount of training data. Uh, now, this is a, a, as an experience from one of our projects that we did with the Indian Army, we were sure that even if the Navy opens up everything that they have, it's not going to be enough for the AI pipelines to learn. So an important understanding point that we incorporated in our proposal as well as in our presentation is that no matter, uh, so we basically said, assuming that the Navy does not give us data, we will make sure that we'll make this product successful. So you, are, when you're understanding their problem statement, it is also understanding their limitations. There are operational limitations that the user is going to have. And the more, especially now in cybersecurity, the more you work with them, you'll realize that the user has a lot of limitations when working with you. So you have to assume that you would be as standalone as possible and still be able to deliver what you are saying you are going to deliver. So these two points in our application really made our application stand out. Uh, the first one is hardware integration and the second one is uh, you know, data generation on our own end. So again, bottom line, uh, understand the operational uh, environment where your solution is going to be deployed and design accordingly right at this stage which shows your understanding of the operational environment as well as the problem. And also fully as much as possible, understand the limitations that the user is going to face when they are going to work with you. These, I mean, this is just an example, but deep understanding the problem statement would mean this as well. And the third most important, um, so sorry, this was the first slide. This is the detail you would want to go uh, and hit uh, right so in just one single statement just hit that you know this is our understanding uh, for such and such uh, environment we would be catering like this for such and such challenges we would be catering like this this is what we feel are going to be the challenges and we would be catering like this for this so it's it's like a risk and a mitigation sort of a metrics that you would like to provide uh, second most important slide as i said based on your full understanding based on your best understanding of the problem statement just give your timeline uh, detail as much as possible your timeline and in correlation with the timeline give your budget line right so so your your cash flow and your timeline needs to go really hand in hand because this is a value based project uh, and yeah uh, if you if you really concentrate on one two three slide i think uh, that's the end of the discussion and that is where you will win it i i will not say lose it i'm sure everyone of you will win it Sure. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Advit. Uh, one more thing I want uh, you to address is that uh, uh, you start applying for the program and you believe that you will be getting it. Um, how do you prepare yourself as a startup? I, I'm not talking about really about the MSMEs because they have the big team and uh, this, but as a startup, as an innovator, how you start preparing yourself in terms of team, in, in terms of cash management. Um, so by the time, because you are giving the timeline based on certain assumptions, you may not have team, you may not have the cash flow at that moment. So how do you prepare within that one to two months time frame from the date of application to signing the uh, agreement right uh, i think uh, in case of disc 7 also the entire process right from the hpsc to the signing of contract happened in two months so it's a very fast paced it's a very fast paced thing that happens um it's a very pertinent question ma'am and uh, something that uh, we also followed during our application um we sort of kept uh, like what we do in startups right uh, for developing our marketing pro campaign, our marketing campaign or our business development campaign, uh, startups generally get into uh, a process like uh, 
having the ideal persona of the user, my user one, user two, user three. So a, a very good method uh, that we followed was to having the um, having the ideal persona of people who should be working on in this project if it works out in this uh, manner. So actually, uh, it is very important to also understand that for most of the startups, um, the cash flow is a majority of the chunk of the cash that you're going to be getting or you're going to be deploying is going to go towards the human resources. It's going to go towards the salaries. It's going to go towards the team that you're going to develop. So the better understanding of the team you have that is going to be deployed on this project, the better understanding of the cash requirement uh, that you're going to have for this project, right? So that is something that you need to be aware of and, and try and have a very... Uh, uh, so when it comes to preparing, for this, it something that we uh, followed, but I think uh, maybe because we were a little at an advanced stage of our uh, of our journey, uh, what we did was we started putting out these feelers and we started uh, scouting for people, assuming on a, on an assumption basis that you know we might go ahead because we had full confidence in our in our application. So we started scouting for people even well in advance of the HPSC as well. Of course, before the HPSC, it was just a general scouting. Ki, yaar, ye profile ka banda chahiye, is profile ka banda chahiye, uh, isko hire karna chahiye. And we also had a backup plan. Ki, agar ye nahi hota hai, fir bhi apne uh, company ke liye ye useful hai, so we can invest in this uh, person uh, at least for the time being. After the SPSC, uh, you really sort of get a gauge and you get a uh, feeler based on. You know, just the body language of the people ki ye hone wala hai ki nahi hone wala based on the questions. So uh, you can start better preparing for your team. Prepare for your team. That is going to be very, very, very important. Uh, however, pe, I, I'll just uh, put up a caution. Don't start working and don't start investing your money and time behind starting to develop a solution even before you start. Uh, like you have the contract. Because as I said, uh, there's going to be a lot of changes uh, from your proposal stage to your contract stage, the, the requirements are going to change. Um, there's going to be a QR document that the user will share. There's going to be PDSPR, all those things will you will get. But you can actually discuss with the user saying that, you know, you have 20 points written over here. Out of these 15 are relatively doable. The remaining three are a little tough, but doable. The remaining two, you are dreaming about. It. This is not magic. It is not going to happen. So make sure that you also say that. And, and that is why in the preparation stage, like what ma'am asked right now, don't start working and don't start putting your money behind some deliverable. Don't invest in some you know, hardware. Don't invest in cloud. Don't invest in, because at the end, you don't really know what is going to happen till the time, till such time you actually sign the document. But I think circling back to how you would prepare, um, majority of the chunk is going to go towards the human resource. So start scouting for people. Um, and of course, uh, depend most on the in-house strengths that you have. I'm sure most of the startups will do it. Uh, so like you would rather depend on the strengths that you already have than uh, going for looking towards strengths that you would require for certain things. Ek to bande nahi hai, that is fine, but don't start building a full team for this project. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank um, you, man. Yeah, um, Mayank has already answered many of the questions which are there in the Q&A. Uh, anyone wants to ask any question, they may raise their hands and we will unmute. Um, Mayank, you want to spell out what are the questions for the benefit of others? If uh, have Sure. Uh, firstly, I'll thank Advait for that uh, great talk. I think you should take on the outreach events from now. From <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mayank. Thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Uh, so first question was how, uh, let me see. First question was about the past expenditure and uh, past expenditure. Uh, basically it's mentioned on our website in the financial FAQs and other FAQs. Uh, past expenditure is whatever you spent on this project prior to signing of the contract. There are some constraints as you can go on our website and see directly from there. I would spell out those constraints for you here. Uh, for the open challenge, will the HPSC be convened? 
as there may be only one applicant for a particular project. Of course, uh, there is only one applicant for one project in the open challenge. But yes, the HPSC is convened. Even if there is only one shortlist, the HPSC is convened. And we have the same process for DISC, open challenge, and prime. So the HPSC is going to be there, and they're going to uh, evaluate all the applications. Uh, how do we get in touch? in contact with the end user basically before the submission of the application. So you can do that uh, via, mul there are multiple methods. Uh, we organize a lot of technical outreach sessions. I think there was one organized for the Air Force earlier today. Uh, you can, you attend those sessions, you address, you ask your queries there, you can get them addressed there. Uh, number two is you can reach out to idexdio at the rate ddpmod.gov.in with your queries. These mails will be forwarded to the end user. Uh, and also we have a uh, form on our website, a uh, link I've provided in the chat, uh, where you can directly submit your queries. These will then be sent to the end user and they'll get in touch with you with their answers to the same. Uh, can an individual submit the proposal without a startup partner and either decide to tie up with startup and make their own startup after the results are announced? Yes, you can do that. You are more than welcome to do that. Uh, you can do that by applying as an individual innovator. So that provision is there in our uh, guidelines. Uh, is there only one winner per disc challenge? No, we have multiple winners in disc challenges. Uh, there's one open question. What is the timeline for challenges for disc nine, winner announcement and contract signing, et cetera. So the last date to apply is 24th of March. After that, we are going to send your applications to the end users. I think that will take what three, four days for us to basically remove the duplication, repetitions, and uh, you know frivolous applications. Uh, the end user then evaluates all these applications. It takes them three, three weeks, four weeks at max, and then we convene the HPSC. So maybe a couple, month, month and a half before we announce the results. And uh, then we can proceed for contract signing, which will take another month, month and a half. So we these timelines, uh, we, we follow very aggressive timelines and we usually meet them. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, Mayank. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Anyone has raised the hands or anyone, any new question? Um, I think, no, there are no more questions from the audience. Uh, Milin and um, Rameshi, if you want to add something now, you heard the about the problem statements. You also heard uh, our startup talking about the IDEX. So if you want to add something based on your expertise, some two cents, closing remarks. I was I was learning from Adi, uh, Adwit. I should not say two cents. I should Adwit said three. I should say minus one maybe. <laughs> so so I'm learning from these discussions. But I think I think uh, uh, opportunity is wide as as you rightly mentioned. Uh, thinking properly about what the solution is going to be and being crisp and sharp when we are presenting it with the limited time available and how you can make the impact. I think one of the most important thing is to understand from a user perspective that what they are looking forward to and crisply communicating that that we have understood your problem and then next thing talking about how we can solve it and help you to make it happen and that is where it will the value creation will happen together i think that messaging in those two or three slides is a important uh, approach what Adwait mentioned from his learning i think it is a good learning for all, uh, us also Adwait. So yes, yes. Sure. thank you for that yeah i think nothing more to add it's great great discussion from my and Adwait. And all the best for all the process, my kids. And I know it's going to be tedious and challenging for you also to scan through applications and then evaluate, manage okay. stakeholders who are challenging stakeholders for you. So interesting time. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ramesh, some closing remarks from your side? Uh, I think Melinda's covered, but uh, all the best to all the stakeholders. Um, and definitely this challenge is, uh, the results are more important. Okay, the journey is more important. And uh, I think uh, the approach towards seeing the problem, because there are a lot of contents available uh, over the internet and a lot of stuff is available, but to understand the problem st statement and coming with the right solution is also very important. And I think uh, look into the details. Things are simple. Uh, don't add complexity. Uh, that is only my remark. And all the best to all the stakeholders. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rameshi. Um, so uh, we would like to tell audience that uh, if you have any further questions, you can write to sign. We will forward those questions to DIO. You can also follow the Twitter handle of DIO where they post all the outreach events um, about the technical outreach sessions and everything. So you may follow that. Any questions uh, you want to ask us, you can write to us and we will answer that. Or if we are not able to, we will forward those questions to DIO. 
so um that is for the um audience and thank you so much thank you milinji thank you ramesh ji thank you thanks advait thanks mayank thanks for thank your time and sharing your, your experiences thank you so much thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you and we encourage everyone to apply thank you so much thank you thank you sir bye bye